Welcome to Hangtail Survival. My name's Robert, and in this video, we're going to uh, talk about the Four Dog Stove. This is the Titanium Deluxe One. Uh, it's a 10 by 10 by 18. I wanted this stove to be uh, very durable over a long period of time while making sure that I didn't get any carbon monoxide uh, released out into the uh, tent. It's a very nice, tight, welded, uh, spot welded, and uh, uh, MIG welded uh, box, the fire box. It's very nice and contained. I wanted this stove so that I could handle really sub-zero conditions and high humidity conditions in a everyday family camping or possibly a bug out situation where we might have to be out in the uh, be out in the winter cold weathers for a, a extended period of time. The four dog stove weighs in about 14 pounds. Uh, that's quite a bit of weight for a uh, backpacking stove. I would normally be carrying this on a pole or ATV horse, uh, horseback or something of that nature uh, where I wouldn't have to carry it. But I wanted to find something that was lightweight. Uh, titanium is super lightweight compared to steel. A stove of this size and dimension would weigh quite a bit more than 14 pounds. This stove is made out of 26 gauge uh, titanium. Uh, that allows for a thinner material over steel, so therefore it cuts down the weight. Uh, it's much stronger and more durable than stainless steel. Titanium is about 200 times less corrosive than uh, stainless steel. Titanium has a melting point of 3200 degrees Fahrenheit, where steel has a 2400 degree Fahrenheit uh, melting point. This has a double uh, floor in it, which uh, Don uh, designed that very well. He has a lifetime guarantee against a burnout. The stove has ribs across the top and down the sides. You've seen them in some of my videos. Uh, that Those ribs allow for heavy weight to be put on this, heavy water and other things. Uh, the, the welding uh, that Steve does uh, on the flue is this is the extra strong uh, flue. Another thing about the quality, Matt has deburred all the corners of the uh, stove, so when the firebox is in my pole or in a cover, it's not going to tear it. It's not going to cut through and, and uh, or cut somebody uh, because of sharp corners. So they've really uh, paid attention to the details. The vent on the front is designed where it has a spark uh, screen to prevent sparks from coming out. It also is a little bit higher so that it causes a turbulent effect of the wind, of the air intake such that you get a nice even burn. The efficiency of this stove is very good. I ordered this one with a baffle in the back. Uh, that slows down the burn of the wood towards the back and allows the wood to the front to burn a little faster. For those people that uh, do not stoke the fire all the time, I would recommend uh, the baffle because you can go with an extended period where you will have coals towards the back of the stove and everything in the front will burn but the coals in the back of the stove will give you that opportunity to let the stoke interval go much longer and you'll still have coals inside and you can restart your fire the last thing you want these things to do is go completely burn down and try to start a fire in the middle of the night uh, the stoke times vary on the condition of your wood, whether it's a hardwood, a softwood, a rottenwood, a, a termite, bug infested, you know, Swiss cheese looking wood, that'll burn really fast. Uh, normally you would have a four hour burn time. I would say starting with a four hour stoke time that you take an hour off if you got softwood, take another hour off for every 20 degrees below freezing. I would take off another hour for every 20 mile an hour worth of wind that you have. The wind can really get in here and pull this off and cause you to have a stove you like it. Uh, here up in the corner I'll put a picture of the uh, pole with wood. Uh, we burned through about one, about three quarters of, we burned through about three quarters of that pole every day. And that's burning it all day. And 
We had super high winds uh, on this trip. One of the safety considerations I have is for this dampener, we've hit it while we're cooking. You hit it, you're gonna get puffed back. You close this thing and you're gonna get puffed back and get smoke in your tent. Uh, I carry a CO meter and we'll talk about that more. Uh, also, I uh, had the wind was vibrating this pipe. It was vibrating so hard and the tent was moving so hard that it took off the spark arrestor and blew it 20 yards from the tent. And in the process of shaking this, this dampener moved in and last night we actually got a little puff back. My, my seal alarm didn't even go off. I, I happened to be up and I could smell it and I could see smoke coming out right here at the dampener. So I'm personally gonna get rid of this dampener. I don't want it. Uh, I don't use it. I leave it open all the time and it's caused me uh, sparks to come out of it. Seldom do I use the dampener to kill my fire. Uh, starving a hot coals of air is a, a recipe for disaster in my opinion. Uh, you could open the door and it could get a puff of wind and you know if you had this shut and you had the front vent shut when you open that up and it gets air from, and it's been smoldering for a while I've seen stoves completely explode coal stoves and blow off the pipe and blow soot all over a house. So after that experience, uh, I will never uh, starve a fire of oxygen. I'll take this out, take it out of the tent and let it cool off out there. The other consideration on your burn time is whether you're a person that likes the tent to be uh, really warm, you know, somewhere as low as 48 but as high as 65, or somebody that likes the tent to it's more warm nature and can have the tent go up as high as 65 degrees, 70 degrees, and down to say in the low 20s. If you in the low, if you like it going in the low 20s, you can do it in uh, four or five hour burn time. And in which case this will be pretty cool, uh, 20 degrees. But even if it gets down to 20 degrees, the humidity in this tent, even if it's 80 percent humidity outside, that that humidity inside is going to be around 20%. So you're not going to get ice crystals forming inside the tent where, you know, I've slept in this tent without the stove down to minus 10 degrees and 86% humidity and woke up with ice crystals everywhere. If you have to pack up your tent early in the morning and get going on the trail and you have to pack up a tent full of ice crystal, it's a real pain. So if you want to let the duration go longer and let the tent get down to 20 degrees, it's still not going to get uh, condensation built inside and, and, and ice crystals built. I don't use a nested stove pipe. I have a three inch pipe all the way up. That allows me to rotate the pipe such that I get uh, all my creosote burned out of this lower section. The flame will come all the way up the ear. I've even seen the flame inside this uh, dampener and that's another reason I want to get rid of it. Uh, this will burn out with the creosote or you can take it outside and pound the two pieces of pipe together and all the creosote and soot will come right out of the pipe and so it's easy to clean. But being able to rotate the pipe is nice. Uh, not having this nesting pipe does require you to uh, take up more area inside the stove but all four sections including the spark arrestor and the elbow fit in this stove pipe with this shelf. I highly recommend the shelf. Uh, Tanya was able to cook in here. She was able to put the meal on here and get things really hot, boil water, and as they finished cooking and needed to be simmered to come out here on the warming tray and uh, it, it really works out nice. I highly recommend the uh, warming as far as the safety of the stove, this is top notch. This is one of the most safest stoves I've ever used. You're not going to get any carbon um, monoxide coming out of this unless you have the door. I'll show that. Uh, you know, if you're stoking, you'll get a little bit. As long as you don't get a, uh, a downdraft and get puffed back or a dampener shut, uh, those are the things that will get you uh, where you have carbon monoxide in the tent. Uh, as long as you keep your tent. Uh, doors and or upper vents uh, open and ventilated uh, you shouldn't have any problem and you surely won't have a problem in high wind conditions but I've never had a problem using the upper vent it's never going to get plugged with uh, snow even if the snow gets two three foot outside around the door my tent doors don't zip from the top they only zip from the bottom I only have one door you know downwind so if it gets plugged up 
you know, I'm not going to get a lot of wind flow from that. Likewise, around the perimeter of the tent, I'm not going to get a lot of wind. But I'll always get nice, clean air from above. I use a 4-inch stove jack, so I get a little wind in around the pipe. And I would not put my stove jack around the pipe real tight. That way, if you float the stove, it can come down. You know, if you have, if you have it straight up, it can just come down as the snow melts. Going at an angle, that's a little bit of a risk. It can jam up, uh, so I wouldn't have my stove pipe going at an angle. For another safety reason, I'd always have a spark arrestor, although my spark arrestor blew off. Uh, one of my lessons on this trip was that uh, you definitely need to be able to screw uh, those stove pipes together. The stove pipe inside the tent, I'm able to pull down and put a little pressure on it. Another good reason to have that zipper vent. I can unzip that vent, pull it down, and I can reach up and grab and work on that spark arrestor if I need to. And lastly, for on the safety side, Make sure that you have a, a good uh, stove jack with, uh, you, know, you know, this one is 575 degrees. So I'm real happy with the stove. If you learned something from this video, like it, and please subscribe to my Hang Tough Survival channel.